right. And good afternoon, everybody. We are in the kitchen. Today is going to be teaching us how to make uh, uchuk caribou soup. I uh, have boring top sirloin here today because I could not find any game meat uh, over this weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm I had my last piece of caribou heart probably six months ago. Like I'm just down to the itty bitty bits. <laughs> but uh, we are so fortunate to be here with um, producer and performance, uh, performing artist and uh, playwright <laughs> so, <laughs> who has set up a proper studio to teach us here today. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Sylvia, and uh, let you get us started. I think we're all ready to go. Great. Hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Sylvia Cloutier. Um, I'm originally from Kultuak, Nunavik. Nunavik is in uh, Arctic, Quebec. I, um, I lived a portion of my life in Montreal as well, between uh, 8 and 18 years old. I lived in the West Island. And um, at 18 or 19, I uh, moved to Ikhadri, uh, where I spent over 20 years. So sometimes I feel like I have one foot up north and one foot down south. Sometimes I feel like I have one foot in Nunavik, one foot in Nunavut. <laughs> um, my mom is a Inuk from Kujak. That's where most of my family on my mom's side is. And um, my dad is a Quebecois. So I kind of, I'm, I'm very Quebecois and I'm very Inuk. Like I'm both, right? <laughs> I'm very proud of both. And uh, who I am also comes through um, in the way I talk, the way I dress, the way I speak. Um, but it also comes through my cooking. <laughs> um, I'm really happy to be sharing um, a recipe today. Um, I am not a chef. I love to cook. Um, I especially love our country food because it's so good for you and it's so delicious. Um, I, I've made caribou uyo many times um, and uh, in different ways as well. But I'm going to show you ba the basic of how I make it and how you can also um, make it your own. So today I got, uh, I'm lucky, I'm very lucky. <laughs> I, uh, I thought I had some of these little pieces here, but then I, I dug through my freezer and I found a hind. <laughs> so no worries, Heather and I are in the same city. She can just drop by and I'll, I'll give you a... A caribou soup at the end of the day. Like so um, I'm, we're making a caribou uyo, tuttuvina uyo, and um, it does, I really like cooking it on slow for a long time, as long as uh, even up to like four or five hours on low, just because it, it becomes very tender. Mm. Um, and that's the way I like it. Some people like it uh, when the meat is a little bit harder and not so tender. But um, everyone is different and everyone makes it their own way. So I don't think that there's a right or wrong way of making it. Um, so we are gonna start, I'm gonna ask you, if you are cooking with me right now, I'm gonna ask you if you can fill up a kettle of water and put it on so that that way you have uh, a good amount of hot water to work with after we do the searing and uh, it'll just, speed things up a little bit a kettle not a pot like a little uh, you can do a pot it won't be the pot that we're going to be cooking in so the things that you're going to need is uh a cutting board maybe even a couple of cutting boards if you don't want to wash uh one in between and then you're going to need a good comfortable you can use a chef knife um you can use a paring knife, but I prefer a long chef knife. You can use a ulu. I, I really enjoy cutting meat with ulu. And then I often like to cut veggies with the chef knife, but you can cut either one. Um, you're gonna need some meat. And if you don't have caribou meat, it's okay. You can use uh, beef, uh, lamb. You can use pretty much any red meat. Um, because it, it kind of breaks down in the same way. Yeah. You can use elk, deer, uh, moose, whatever, whatever you have. Um, you know, it's, it's really the, 
uh, I can't say we can make this vegetarian <laughs> or vegan um, because the, 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 the real, the foundation is um, cooking with meat that is caught um, very sustainably. It's meat that is organic. It's meat that is natural. And in our community, every time somebody catches it, they share the meat. And so this is what, how I got the food. Uh, the hine I got from Akinisi Sivuarabik. The, the meat is from Pouvernituk in Nunavik. And then these pieces, these are like pieces with bone. Mm. Um, this is from Kudra, from my hometown, from the community freezer. So we are so lucky today. It's not every fall that the caribou are coming around now, um, but last year they did. And um, so we, uh, I'm lucky that I was able to access some meat. Um, from family and community. My uncle Charlie always shares with us. He's uh, somebody who is very, very generous. I have like a little piece of caribou heart in my, uh, in my freezer and I'm like waiting for the day to cook that as well. It's so, if, no one, if you haven't had it before, it's just like the most tender. It just, mm, it's the most delicious thing. Anyway. Yeah, I love, I love that fried. I love mm -hmm. caribou heart fried up. It's just a little and bit then, of this. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start, um, and then okay, so you have your meat, you have your cutting board, and we're gonna start with cutting the meat, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead with. I'm gonna take the only challenge I really have today, because I really I know how to cook, and I'm not worried about that. It's that I'm gonna have to switch my camera to different stands, um, so that you can really see. Um, you have a better view of, of uh, what I'm doing here. Um, you don't have any, if you don't have cooking experience, it's totally cool. Like I will go through the very basics um, and, uh, and we have an hour to do this. So uh, we, I, I would like for the caribou to cook for longer, for longer, for like four hours or whatever. Um, so after we're finished here, um, it'll be ready for supper for you to eat. Okay, so let's get going. Um, in terms of vegetables, uh, we need an onion, garlic, it's optional, but garlic is a, is a good one. You can also use uh, granulated garlic or and granulated onion if you prefer uh, than fresh. Um, carrots, celery, so those are your main vegetables. And then you can add whatever vegetable that you like. If you like broccoli or peas or green beans or zucchini, like whatever you like is, is fine. But we're gonna start with the, the onions and the celery and the carrots after we cut the meat. Okay, and you're gonna need a nice big pot. You're also gonna need some butter and some oil, cooking oil. And the cooking oil can be avocado oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, whatever you've got. All right, so um, these pieces, these uh, little pieces right here, I hope, can you see okay? Because I can't see myself on the big screen. I can only see Heather. You I wonder if we can switch. Um, I wanted to switch, you can set it to gallery view. Okay, um, I'm gonna do that. You can pin your own video if you wanna see yourself bigger. If you set it to gallery view, you'll see everyone. And that's okay, awesome. that'd be fun. I'm very new to this, so I go to... Up in the top right corner, it should say, uh, it should give you different view options. Zoom? No, not in the, not in the zoom part, it's like on... Okay, the... I'm gonna turn you around so I can see this. <laughs> How's that? Uh, your sound is gone. I can't hear you. Can other people hear? Sylvia, no, none of us can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't think I can do this uh, gallery view. Are you on a computer or a phone? I'm on my phone. Oh, it, it might not be possible on your phone. Because I, that's how I have flexibility. Okay, well, look, we'll do our best, okay? Sure. I'll tell We can see you very clearly. Okay, I just want to, I just want to make sure you see what I, what I'm doing, okay? So I have a hind here, I rinsed it, and of course, after washing it, sometimes you have to take some of the, some of the muscle off. Sometimes there's like caribou hair, that's normal because we are, we get this from our hunters who cut it right out on the land. <laughs> I have eaten so much caribou hair. <laughs> yeah, that's normal. Inuit are used to it. But we don't cook with it. We try not to. Okay, so see these pieces right here? These are awesome for cooking soup, okay? So a lot of these pieces, all I had to do really was just wash it. I don't even have to cut it. The community freezer in Kujok is so awesome. They have this giant commercial saw and they just, <laughs> they just cut, cut everything for you. But what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the hind and I'm gonna cut it. Can everybody see the meat that I'm cutting? Yep. Yeah? Looking good. Okay. So I like my Ulu, Ulu by Innovations. Um, I'm just basically taking the muscle layer off the top, just because it's not really pleasant to, uh, to eat. But when you do cook this for a long time, it kind of, uh, it's like, it almost like melts. It really, um, it, it really softens. So I'm not gonna cut this whole thing. I'm just uh, showing you, I'm just showing you the pieces that we're going to cook for the uyu. The ulu is, for those that are new to Inuit culture, the ulu is a woman's knife. And you can cut, you can cut meat. You can also use it to cut the leather. You can also use it to scrape leather or the the fur and it's very i'm trying to it's very very handy it's all in the wrist you can even <laughs> you can even uh pound it if you need to okay so i'm just taking there's not much of a technique here. There's a bone under here, so it's making it slide. Just make sure that when you're cutting the meat, that you're putting pressure down, that you're using your body when you're cutting. See, there's a little hip uh, bone right here, so if the, if the whole pine is uh, resting on it while well, it's gonna wobble. When are we gonna want hot water? Should I have a kettle on right now? Yeah, because then by the time we start the soup, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be nice and hot. Perfect. It just saves time. It's not necessary, but it saves time. When I was living in Ikhandri, I used to throw these pieces out my window and feed the ravens. <laughs> and maybe that's not like the nicest thing to do, but you know, <laughs> they need to eat too. And I just didn't like the idea of it going in the garbage. Hmm. And I was working on a theater show and it was called Tuluga, which is ravens. So it was also my way of kind of studying them. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to the ravens. What's that? 
and said, like you paid them an artist fee <laughs> for their yeah. contributions. Yeah. Yeah. I'll feed you if I can look at you. <laughs> and what's really what's really awesome is that caribou meat. We eat this like we eat this just raw, frozen, just like that. Mmm, this is so good. Mmm. Mmm. It's, I'm really lucky to have a hind because usually that's the first thing that people want. Mm. So when a friend gave me a hind, I was like, whoa, <laughs> she loves me. <laughs> You're married now. <laughs> mm hmm Mmm, this is so good. Okay, well, for there to be room for, um, just so that there's, I mean, I can cut like a lot of meat, but because I'm, I also want to cook these guys in the same pot. I'm going to keep this to a minimum. I mean, not a minimum. I'm going to stop here is what I'm saying. So all the muscle. Agapo says, stop eating, we're all starving looking at you. I know, I'm so sorry. Who said that? It looks good, it looks good. <laughs> it is, it's awesome. I'm never gonna stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you see how the caribou, it has kind of like fibers that run this way. Mm. If you cut meat with along with the fibers, it's going to be stringy. So if you cut against it, they'll have nice softer bites. Mm. Yeah. Which is how I like it. Like I said, there's no right or wrong way. Can you guys see me cutting? I can always change. No, you're, you're perfectly fine. Can you see? Yeah, everybody's giving a okay. thumbs up. So I have these guys and I'm gonna cut just like bite size. Like this. And it's okay if there's a little bit of muscle because when you cook it for a long period, it gets soft and you don't, uh, it, beef, fat runs all over, but in, with caribou, the fat, it's so lean, the fat runs, it, it, the fat is on the surface, mm. on the back. And so the meat looks quite different. Like that, the fat is all around, just the outside. What's up? I said bison is like that too. Yeah, I think a lot of wild meats are like that. I think muskox is also like that. I have muskox in the freezer. Oh. One of my best friends, Malaya, Hung Up Chapman, gave me some. So that's going to be my next project, my next cooking project with my kiddo. We're going to eat that umi <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be a healthy, healthy, healthy food, healthy meal. It's kind of hot outside, so caribou always makes you hot, so we're going to be very hot in it. Feel too. Yeah. Okay. So now, okay, we got all our meat. I've got quite a bit of meat here. You can even make a soup with half of this. Mm. You can make a soup with double this. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how big your pot is, okay? Now, what I can do is I'm trying to see here if I should cut the vegetables where I am or if I should move over. Mm. 
I'm gonna cut them here. Okay. So, onion. People like to cut onions in their own way. I know that uh, I like to use a chef's knife for this. This is how I like to cut the onion. Can everybody see okay? I can't even see anyone's comments. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming. Everybody, but if, I'll let you know if anybody comments anything. Okay, sounds good. So I cut one end, okay? And what I, what I like to do is, you see the little, um, what do you call this? The little belly button? <laughs> <laughs> I cut it right in the middle. And then I take the first layer off. If I cut this, it'll kind of fall apart. So it helps me keep it intact. Okay? So everyone cut, cuts their onions in, the, in, in their own way. I'm going to cut it this way and then this way. So basically we're dicing an onion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it in two different ways so that you can see. Okay. What my trick is, it's not how you're supposed to cut a knife, it's how I do it, is I always let, I always make sure the tip of my knife stays on the board. There. How big pieces are you cutting? About. It doesn't matter really. Dice them. So this is my other half. You can, I like it with a lot of onion. What happens when you're cooking onion is that they sweeten up. Okay. So another way that you could do it is cut it like this. If you want bigger pieces of onion. Of course, you don't want to slice your fingers off. So these make for a little bit bigger, but it's all going to the same pot. So those are two different ways that, that I cut onions. You can cut them the way you feel comfortable. Okay, I'm get a little bowl for these onions. And I feel my eyes start to burn a little bit, and it's because I was cutting them a bit slow. <laughs> but it makes a big difference when your onion is in the fridge first, as opposed to a cupboard. I go through onions a lot, so, okay. Onion is ready. And now, Celery. What happens, just like the onions and the celery, it makes your broth, it, it gives flavor to your broth. So it doesn't really matter how you cut the celery either. It's kind of, it's gonna soften up and kind of like blend right in. So this is how I cut my celery. Huh? How much celery are you using? I'm doing three ribs. Moving on to the carrots. So I got baby carrots from the store yesterday. 
because they ran out of these guys. These are fresh carrots from, uh, from a farmer. So what I did was for these carrots, I just peeled them. You just take the ends off. And same thing, you just chop it. And I'm putting them in the same bowl as the celery because they're going in at the same time. These baby carrots, I just basically align them. They're super easy to cook. I wash them really well. Sometimes there's a little bit of liquid in the bag, so you want to make sure that you clean them very well. A lot of times up north, these are the carrots that you can find in your grocery store. It's fun in, in Montreal right now, you can buy carrots that are multicolored. They're purple, yellow, orange, they're fun. They taste great too. All right. You do about as many carrots as you have celery? Like, is it about half and half? Yeah. It's just, you know, this is what I'm making for carrots and celery. I like a lot of onions. You can do half this onion if you want. It's totally fine. Now I'm gonna chop some garlic. I hope I'm not going too fast for you. If anybody needs if I, to slow down to eat something, please put it in the comments. What's that? I said if anybody needs a, a refresher on any step, just put it in the comments. Okay. I'll, I'll well, what's, what's fun about doing this workshop, because I produced um, cooking shows in Nunavut, and we had to like prep everything, you know, we were doing two hours of work and it was turning into a 22 uh, minute episode, right? But now we're just like taking our time and we're doing things step by step, which makes it fun. If I could say, I really like getting fresh garlic for whatever season. I don't like the garlic that you find uh, in the grocery stores most of the time um the 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 garlic from china um oftentimes it's they're old i really like the freshest so sometimes it's in quebec that i get the garlic um sometimes it's from spain um like this one has a little bit of a purple tinge to it it's like fresh and fresh garlic should be really sticky you know the and up north you know we don't always have options right but I'm just saying, like, if you're making an order, a food order, and uh, then I would, I would, uh, I would choose the freshest garlic possible because it really is going to make your your meal taste way better. Um, yep. And I both live uh, close to Jean Talon Market. I feel so lucky to be so close mm -hmm. to that amazing, privileged really, to be so close to such amazing fresh food. The garlic you get there is awesome. Yeah. I get my garlic from there too. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy that there's a guy that sells uh, the, the Quebec. Jack. The guy who sells Yeah, and there's like different seasons too of, of Quebec garlic, which is kind of fun. So what I'm doing is I take I took them off the bud. How many I took them out? I I'm taking I took four out. Okay. You can do two if you don't like it too strong. I like it very flavorful. Um, and basically I took them out and what I do is I take my knife and I go over it like this gently with my hand and I push on it. And when I push on it, see what happens? Mm -hmm. This comes off really easily. Now, everyone has a way of cutting garlic. <laughs> I like to take my garlic 
I like to uh, slice it in half this way. Slice it like this and just like. doesn't have to be perfect. It's going in a soup. It's kind of it's gonna melt away just like uh, just like an onion will. Right now is a good time to put heat on your pot. You're putting oil or something inside. I heat it up first. I have a gas stove, so it heats up very fast. If you have a, a how do you call it, electric uh, element, mm. then uh, it's it's gonna just put it on high. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sear our meat first. And when we sear the meat, this is what adds flavor to your broth. This is what makes your broth brown. So if you add your meat to boiling water, it's not gonna turn brown. It's gonna be like beige. So my garlic, if I wanna do it really fine, I won't do it really fine, but I just gather it like this. Can everybody see? Yep. And I just make sure the tip is always on the on the board. Doesn't have to be perfect. Put the garlic in here. I'm putting them in bowls, but I often just chop everything on a big cutting board and I put it on the side, on the side, on the side. So I don't have to use bowls and clean bowls. And I also just use one pot. So it actually doesn't take very much cleaning to make a one pot soup, you know? Uh, so Riley yeah. has, is using um, fresh elk meat, but she had it already ground. So oh, okay. different for her, what she should do next? Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of like a hamburger soup. And it won't take as long to cook. So should she put so, the meat on a high right away as well though? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, same idea. <clears throat> yeah, she's gonna, she, I think what she can do is, um, uh, I'll, I'll go through that step with her. It's, it's the same thing except her, hers is gonna cook very fast. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, she says. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so my pot is heating up. And in order for me to show you <laughs> um, the food, I have to move the camera closer to the, to the um, stove element. So I'm just gonna wash my hands. I also wanna show you the other vegetables just in case, but we're not gonna cut them until we're done this process. So basically we're gonna sear the meat and then we're gonna take the meat out onto a plate. So you can get a big plate or a big bowl. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do that process. And then we're, gonna, then we're gonna cook the onions and the carrots and celery and garlic. So those are the next steps that we're gonna do. I really like these kind of, instead of a wooden spoon, I kind of like these little wooden spatulas because you can really like scrape the bottom of the pan. Um, and then I'll go through the spices after when we're done. Do you have oil or in the <laughs> pan? Just, just the meat goes in. What's that? You have oil in your pan? Not right now. I'm trying to let it heat up. And once it's hot, then I add the oil because I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to add oil and butter. If you put it just butter, it's going to burn. And if you put oil, it's just going to burn. But if you put the two, um, that's what gives it a nice sear. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we don't want it to be the pot, you don't want the pot to be so hot that it's like scolding, but you want it hot before you add the oil and the butter okay. because you want it to sear. So um, also one of the things that I really like is sea salt as opposed to table salt. 
it's just better for you. All the minerals are already still in the salt and it just has a, a nice natural flavor. And um, I have the Himalayan pink sea salt um, and then I also have uh, uh, sea, sea salt flakes that, that work great. Whatever salt you like. Okay, so I am gonna wash my hands and move the camera. So forgive me if I'm gonna make you wobble. Just let me know if you can still hear me. Oh, that looks good. Yeah. Ooh, look at your setup, how great. Do you think we need a light? <laughs> uh, light or no light? The light, yeah, it looks good. Okay, so this is pretty hot from my end. And what we're gonna do, is you're gonna take, I'm just gonna show you. These are oils. This is avocado oil that has a very high smoke point, which means it takes a lot for it to burn. This is olive oil. So whatever, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. They look the same. They're, they're, I guess I'm not a nutritionist, but I think they're pretty healthy. Like I prefer those over any other oil for cooking. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a little bit of oil, actually a good amount of oil is good because caribou is very lean. And then you're gonna add a good amount of butter. Now this is gonna sear. You see that? Is it okay? Yeah. Everyone good? Okay, I'm probably putting more fat than you're used to seeing, but that's because caribou is very lean. Any wild meat is lean. So I'm putting the big pieces, like the bigger pieces, the ones with the bones in first. How are we doing for time? Uh, we're good. We got about 20 minutes. 20 minutes left? Yeah. Okay. Go a little bit over. All right. So while this is searing, while this is searing, so this is my little Himalayan salt. It's like the little fine salt, sea salt. You can do any fine. And these are like, this is my favorite salt. It's a, uh, it's Malden sea salt uh, flakes. And if you just, you can do the flakes or you can use the, the, the fine salt, it doesn't matter. But if you just salt it a little bit right now, it'll give it a little bit of a crust, like a dark crust. If you want to use tongs instead of a, a fork or a spatula, you have a little bit more control when you flip it. Mm. Did you say that? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so you want you, you don't want to like mess around too much with it. You really want it to have like a nice dark sear. So keep it on high, even though it feels like you shouldn't put it on high. Uh, it's gonna give, it's gonna make your broth so much better. I usually just salt it for now, and I add my seasonings after. Do you see how brown it is on this side? Oh yeah. That's what you want. You want a nice dark brown. My my pot, it's kind of a fancy pot. <laughs> is that a Dutch oven? It's a kerze. And it's probably gonna be with me till I'm an old lady. 
And it's expensive, but it'll be with me till I'm an old lady. So when you think about it, it's not that, it's, it's, you're not throwing your money away. <laughs> but I really recommend these uh, Dutch oven pots because it's almost like you put a lid on it and it's almost like an oven on your stove top. You can also cook this. Once we're done, you can either put it in the oven and put it on slow, on like a slow cook, or you can leave it on your stove top. Looks delicious. So just to save a bit of time, you can use a red onion, uh, sorry, a red pepper if you like. Uh, zucchini. I found a corn <laughs> in my fridge. Um, the starch is totally up to you. It can be pasta, it could be rice, it could be potatoes, um, anything that you want. Uh, I have actually leftover noodles in my fridge from a, a meal yesterday. So I was going to add that, but I also have some potatoes here to chop just to show you. So it's really, yeah, you make it the way you like it. What's your favorite? I have, I mean, it depends on what mood I'm in. I probably do potatoes less. If I make a stew, if you want it to have like a thick broth, then you add some flour to it. But I'm not crazy about, like, I mean, I'll make it in the winter time, like when you want some, some, something coached, like, uh, yeah, I, I think I probably use noodles the most. My mom uses rice a lot. Mm. And I know that even in some regions, in the regions, they put oats. Oats. Yeah. So do you see how the caribou, like, um, it's all on one side here? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to season this a little bit in the bowl. And I'm not going to put them all in. Because if I put them all in, they're not going to brown. Someone said they set off their smoke alarm. <laughs> Oh, that's because their oil got very hot. <laughs> yeah, so everyone, everyone's uh, stove is different and, and their pot is different. So it's pub. Did they use oil and a metal pot? So we just we need to get to know our own stoves and and how they react to different uh, temperatures. Okay, my, these pieces are looking amazing. Yeah. So they look like, they almost look burnt. They're not burnt. They're very, like, they're, they're cured very, uh, they're nice and dark brown. And that's going to make your broth amazing. Do I want to cook off the liquid that's in my pan or do I want to save it? You want to save it? I save it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take the ones with the with the I'm gonna cook the rest of my meat here. So just there you go. You can even add a little bit more sauce. It might look like you're putting too much salt, but you're making a soup with a lot of liquid. So it's actually not going to be too salty. And if you sprinkle the salt from a high distance, then it, it distributes more evenly than if you pour it in one, in one area. So 
these pieces are they're juicier, right? So it takes longer to sear. There's a lot of juices in it. So it takes longer to get like nice and brown. But try to get them brown, even if it's only on one side. Everyone okay? Anyone have any questions? Um, I think mine is done, so I take it off, right? Yeah, you take it out. Now keep the juices and put your onions in. And I'm gonna do the same just for, uh, just to be on the same page as everyone. Okay. You can make it, you can cook it longer if you have more time. I don't need to do it. So you see all this beautiful juice? Your meat has absorbed a lot of the oil already. So with this, you put the onion. And you let that sweat. Sweating means um, until the onions are like uh, translucent. But it doesn't, actually it doesn't, we don't have to get to that point. Just let them uh, brown up a bit. Onions are tough. <laughs> They're like, uh, it's not like garlic. If you put garlic in hot oil, it'll burn right away. But onions are, uh, are tough that way. And again, you can add a little bit more salt. And what happens is when you put the salt, it draws the moisture out of the onion. It kind of like dries them out a little bit. So they, they cook a little faster. Dan is asking if you can go back one step and say what you just did. Uh, yeah. You missed a part. Okay, so after I seared the meat, I took it out and I put it in the bowl, but I kept all those juices in there. And then I added the chopped onion. And I just want them to be like, I don't want them to be fully cooked because I'm gonna be making a soup for, that's gonna cook for a long time, but I want them to absorb all the brown bits on the bottom. It's called deglazing. So did you See? add salt? A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit, okay. So now all my little brown bits, I'm scraping them. If your pot is kind of dry, don't worry. You can add a tiny bit of water, just a little bit, just to scrape all the bits. So I think the onions are like, I can cook them longer, but just to save a little bit of time, um, I'm gonna add my garlic. And my carrots and celery. And once you do that, you can let it cook for a little, for a little bit, but it's all gonna boil into your, uh, as long as all the little brown bits are, are like scooped up on your pot, now what you can do is you can put all your meat back in the pot. So I'm gonna add,
And there's gonna be like a little bit of like kind of cooked blood in the bowl and that's perfect. Like that makes a really nice broth. And it also gives a lot of good nutrition. Are we are we all good? Looks good. So right now we have our onion, garlic, carrot, and celery cooking at the bottom. We have all our meat on the top. Okay. Our pot is still on high for a bit. And what we're going to do is whatever seasoning, whatever, whatever spices that you like, this is how I get my spices. I buy these little jars and I go to this little grocery store and I buy them uh, in a bag. Like, I don't know how you call that in English. I'll buy them. Bulk like, buy. Yeah, bulk buy. So this ends up costing like a buck, a dollar or something like that. I really like granulated onion and granulated garlic as opposed to garlic powder, onion powder, or garlic salt and onion salt. I find it has much more flavor. It's just dehydrated garlic and onion. So we put a lot there. If you put, if you'd rather this, you can put a little bit of this. You don't have to. That's the granulated garlic. This is the granulated salt. You don't have to, but if you want to add more flavor. And one thing that I really like, and I don't know what the company is called because I buy it in a big bag, but this is vegetable uh, seasoning. It's dehydrated vegetables with, um, it's not a soup mix, there's no MSG in it. I just like it for flavor, it's salty, and it just tastes like dehydrated vegetables. And I put a couple of teaspoons of that. You don't even need it if you don't have it. I don't remember what it's called, but it's a vegetable seasoning that you often find, uh, I think it's Polish. You often find it where the salt and pepper or the spices are in the grocery store. Another thing I like, is paprika. I like a little bit of paprika, like maybe one teaspoon. If my son, if my son found out there was all these things in it, he wouldn't want to eat it because <laughs> he doesn't like the spices. So I kind of, I don't overdo it. One of the flavors that I really like and it's, is fennel seeds. And you don't have to <laughs> put it in if you don't want to, but it's just something that I like. And if you want it a little bit spicy, you can add chili flakes if you want, or a little bit of cayenne pepper. So what I like to do is, I like to put my spices in before I add my water. If you want, you can even make this broth a little bit tomato flavored and put tomato paste, or even a ton of crushed tomatoes. I think I'm gonna give the tomatoes today. So now, you're, am I going too fast here or is everyone okay? So I'm, I'm adding boiling water, boiled water. So you said you could even add a can of crushed tomatoes if you want to? Or yeah, have to if you like that flavor. It kind of gives it like a little bit of a tomato, uh, sorry, like an Italian flavor. Oh yeah. I do that a lot and I, I like it with like noodles, like little cute noodles. <laughs> My son likes it. I grew up eating like that. My mother would make, uh, would make it with tomatoes sometimes, but oftentimes she makes it like more traditional and it's just with rice. When we were, my dad would make caribou soup with a can of like alphagetti. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, there's like, I I grew up with that too, like with with all the uyo, with soup mixes. Mm. But the only thing about that is that here I'm gonna put the cover on just to make it hot for a few. How are we doing for time? How much hot water are you adding? Like just to cover it or a lot? 
Yeah, I did it to cover it. And you can actually put more because it's going to reduce as it cooks. So once it starts boiling, it's, it's not boiling just yet, but once it starts boiling, then you put it low, like a very low simmer. And you leave it simmer and you, you keep an eye on it, but you leave it simmer for like two, three, four, even five hours if you want, as long as it's nice and low. And if you want, you can add even, you can break a corn and even put a whole corn in at like for the last hour. You can chop up some red peppers on the, on the last half hour, hour, because you don't want like the red peppers to mush or like these are vegetables that are like, they become very soft when they're cooked. I like to do, uh, I like, actually the corn can go in at the, at the beginning because you're, you're just creating more flavor in your broth. Yeah, so that's it. Let's do this. So if I want to add potatoes or pasta, you do that like around the cooking time. You only do that at the, like, here. I'm going to take the camera off so you can see me. <laughs> or here. How's this? Ha! Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to take it off. So I, um, when my soup is cooked, Usually I make a bowl, I serve a bowl, and I'm sorry I didn't, I'm not doing that right now, but I would really like it if you guys took pictures of your finished soup. Okay, what I'm gonna show you is something I made about a month ago. Riley's getting, um, she was gonna put a butternut squash in her soup, but her four-year-old daughter facing the squash and has been playing with it at like a doll for the last two days and so when she put the squash on the cutting board all of started to cry oh we can see it <laughs> yeah i had one too and so, so if you're gonna put butternut squash i would put it in the last half an hour of cooking um same with any soft vegetable and at the same time if you want to cook your starch in your soup and if you want to put dry noodles in your soup for the last half hour for it to boil or potatoes or rice. It's always for the last half hour because if you put it too early, you're just thickening it. It's, it you're gonna, your, veg, your soft vegetables are gonna, and your starch is gonna lose. They're just gonna break apart and it's gonna be mushy. Am I simmering all day with the lid on? Or What's up? Is it lid on or lid off for the simmer? I, I put the lid, I take the lid off. Okay. But you can put it, like, you don't want it to boil over, right? Yeah. Um, if it's real, no, but you can, it, it, it really, it's up to you. If you want to put it on super low and put the lid on, just remember that when you put the lid on, it gets hotter. So you have to put it on really low, but then it acts like an oven. Mm. And even in the winter time, if you want the house to warm up, I would cook it in the oven. Ah. Yeah, that's how my, uh, my Saunik used to do it. I think I lowered the volume, hold on. Someone was asking what spice you added after paprika. Oops. You, how it was, did I do this? Bowl. It was like a, a vegetable medley kind of thing. Say that again? Someone asked what spice you added after the paprika. And I said it was like a- Okay, so vegetable. these are spices that I like and they're uh, totally optional. I like granulated onion and salt, uh, granulated onion, granulated garlic, paprika. I put a little bit of fennel seeds cause I really like fennel seeds. Um, and I also put that vegetable seasoning. So the vegetable seasoning is basically dehydrated vegetables, mm. uh, granulated with some salt in it, and there's no MSG. So instead of putting a soup mix like our parents and grandparents do, <laughs> um, I, uh, there's a lot of chemicals in soup mixes. That's why I don't, I don't like how I feel after I eat them. 
Um, although I don't care if I'm camping because <laughs> everything is so delicious and feels so good. But um, yeah, you can put a little bit of, I like a little bit of heat. So I put a bit of cayenne pepper, but really a little bit. Um, you can put pepper and you just season it the way you like. Sometimes if I put a can of, of tomatoes, yeah. I'll put a little bit of basil just to make it a little bit more Italian style. Um, I think it's in German in Germany that they have like, they put a lot of, I can't remember what it's called, but they cook their meats with lots of onions and it gets, be, it becomes a little bit sweet. Mm. And, um, and they put paprika. So I would encourage you to like try different paprikas, try different salts, uh, try different seasonings to see what you like. Every time I make this, it's different. And what I usually do, because I'm a busy mom, <laughs> is I have these giant jars. Mm. And as soon as my, my soup is cooked, as soon when it's really, really hot, I open the jar and I put some in there and I seal it. And I make sure that the jar is really clean. And you can boil your jars ahead of time and then you can boil them after to really jar it and, and, and then it lasts a lot longer. But for me, I, I can put it in my fridge at least two weeks, sometimes even a month. I don't, I don't, it doesn't usually last that long. But this is how, you know, it saves time to feed your kids later on or you've got like a meal ready for next time. And it's always different. The way my mom makes it is with, um, she makes it with, Onion, I don't even know if she puts garlic in it. <laughs> she, she, I don't even think she puts carrots or, sear, or celery. She just sears it, onions. Um, she makes the same thing with ptarmigan and she puts little bits of bacon in it. Mm. And, um, and then you make the, the, the chayop. Chayop is broth. And then after that, she puts uh, rice and it becomes almost like a porridge. Mm -hmm. So that was like my baby food when I was little and it's still my baby food right now. That is delicious. Okay, so right now I'll show you. I'm going to take it off. I don't know what button I pushed, but I ended up seeing a bunch of you guys there. So do you see? It's boiling quite heavily, right? Yep. So I'm gonna turn it down to like three or whatever on low. And you can put the lid on and, and just check on it, but you just let that go. Uh, it looks delicious. Shan is asking what uyuk means. Uyuk is the soup, caribou tutu, or tutu, depending on where you are, Shan. What? Shan was also asking if you've ever tried barley. Yep. Ooh. Even lentils. I was going to say, I bet barley yeah. would be really good. And you just really, like, it would almost cook in the like, You can make it any, any way you like. Um, I've also made spelt, like uh, spelt grains. It's kind of like an old, it's like, it's like an ancient grain, older than wheat or something like that. And it's very similar to barley. Um, yeah, you can make it any way you want. If um, it means any kind of soup or specifically? It means boiled meat. Boiled meat. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't want to face that way because it's messy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm um, cleaning up this part of my kitchen. <laughs> here, I'll show you something else actually. She said she does not cover the pot, except for she, it was. This is also what I've done with caribou broth. Mm. This is just, just the broth. And, I, and I, I fridged it because I really like making pho, like the Vietnamese soup with caribou broth or with beef broth or whatever. And basically all you do is once your broth is done, you can even make like, um, I even make a um, borscht, like the beet soup, with, with this broth as well. Because the broth is already done. You don't have to buy it in a container at the store. With, for the pho, I just basically put this in a pot, 
and add your star anise, your cloves. You can follow any like uh, uh, recipes and you just boil it for, you simmer it for, I don't know, maybe half an hour or at the most, and not, not even an hour because your broth is already made. And then you strain it, uh, not you strain it, you just take the star anise and the fennel and the peppercorns and all that out. And then you put your um, beef or pieces of thin caribou and then your rice noodles. Amazing. Yeah. Riley's asking about sweet potatoes and I, that's the same as the last half an hour, right? Yeah, sweet, sweet Any potatoes are gonna be very mushy. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, they might like, they might fall apart and change the texture of your broth. So, but what you can do is you can roast them on the side and then add them to your bowl of soup after. That way they stay intact. So basically what I would do is, I can, I can make a mock uh, soup here. Not a mock soup. You got your ulu. Uh, a lot of times people would make them for you, but there are some people that sell ulus, right? Uh, Sylvia, did you say yours was? Yes, mine is from Innovation. Here, I'm gonna show you how I make a soup. So, one moment. <laughs> you find innovation on, uh, I think you can, yeah. right? Yeah, innovation is uh, Dino Bruce who makes these beautiful ului. I have a collection of them. They're gorgeous. <laughs> uh, Bruce the lawyer? What's that? Bruce, Bruce the lawyer, Bruce? No, Bruce, uh, Dino Bruce. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. He, this is the last one that he, uh, that he made that I received. Beautiful. And I have like a set like this. Mm -hmm. uh, my son uses the little one. And uh, the first, the first set that he made a few years ago, my mom gave me this for Christmas. Nice. He makes beautiful ului, very well made and, and funky. <laughs> so you can find his uh, you can shop on on facebook on his facebook page innovation so basically i would take this soup okay this is the soup that i made but i would i would cook it longer and then i have these noodles from yesterday they're just plain noodles and I put them in the bowl. That's like healthy. Yeah. And you can put like, yeah, yeah. Um, you can put peas. So my son, every time I cool down his, his uh, soup, I don't put an ice cube anymore. I just drop a few green peas because he likes green peas, thank God. Frozen green peas. Yeah. So that here. I hope I don't cut you off. <laughs> that looks awesome. Yeah. So your meat is there. This is homemade and there's no chemicals there's no preservatives it's all natural um you can make it the way you want i often don't measure <laughs> um because that's just the way i cook but um sometimes you like you know some people like more onions than than others and, and if you if you don't mind the onion taste but you want less then you adjust it the way you want and there's no right or wrong but i highly recommend you sear your meat really well and then you add your liquid so that it can um, it can make a nice broth because a nice broth really rocks i'm so excited to try mine it's just simmering on the stove uh shanna saying that her oyuk smells delicious <laughs> I think. 
Everyone is excited. Uh, Agapo is saying thank you. Um, I think that this is brilliant. I'm so excited to eat this tonight. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure everyone is also going to join me in saying Nakumi, uh, Sylvia, that was just wonderful. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much. I'm really glad I got to do this. I'm, I'm very proud of all of you who were brave to try something new and something different. And um, if you if you ever want uh, to reach me and you need advice on how to cook um, this kind of soup, I am always available on um, on Facebook. My name is Sylvia uh, Kutier. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a great supper. Uh, please take pictures and send us the pictures. Uh, send them to Heather if you want. Please. I would love to see your, the end result of your cooking. Listen, everybody. Um, so if you want to see Sylvia again soon, this was our last uh, weekly workshop. But Sunday, this Sunday, June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day is going to be our sort of grand finale. And Sylvia is going to be uh, Inuit drum dancing and singing with us and maybe doing a little bit of a tutorial as well if you have a drum at home. Uh, Susan Aglukark and Sarah Beth Holden are going to read their children's books. Lakalu Williamson Bathroom will be performing. Eldred Allen is going to do a drone photography workshop. Wow. We've got uh, open mic night with Takalik Partridge. Uh, the Inuit Art Foundation is doing an artist interview. We've got um, Darcy Bernhardt and Tom McLeod, who are Inuvialuit, who are going to come on and talk about their digital storytelling project. We got a really cool day. Uh, we'll be announcing that all tonight. And it'll all be uh, free, open to the public. And we hope that you will join us for that. Um, that's it, everybody. We'll see you on Yay. Sunday. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing any more of my shows, I'm also uh, performing for NEC Canada Performs on Monday at 11 a.m. for the next three weeks. So it's a family show. Bring your kids so they can learn about their Inuit culture. Yeah. Thank uh, you for having me, Nakumi. Thank you so much. Merci. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>